Now, first of all, I want to say that the main character in your reading for the month of June is this uh, Knight of Cups here. So, the Knight of Cups is looking like he's jumping from one thing to the other without gathering the experience from what has been, because they're holding their cup high and mighty. So, uh, they want to be the knight in shining armor <coughs> and offering uh, this uh, cup, the cup of their heart to someone. Uh, it's like the holy grail of love. So... Um, Right off the bat, I see a lot of people in this reading. It's almost like a soap opera in the month of June for you, Virgo. Um, a lot of people. But these can go several ways. So let's start from one, the magician, because he is number one. <laughs> okay, so the magician may embody a person that has the um, all the creational elements at their disposal and they can uh, create uh, things in their life. They are very capable and they're mostly like an architect and they're getting ideas, flash of insights from the divine and they're gonna move on to creating them because they have the power at their disposal. <clears throat> and it's one. So you're starting uh, the month of uh, June here uh, with you being very well aware of the fact that you have everything that you need and you can start creating that which you want. The power is at your disposal. It's up to you to use it and to create certain situations for, for yourself. It may relate to your love life or your work or your own personality in general. Uh, all that we know here is that you are very in tune with existence and now you know how to play with these elements as to uh, change your reality according to your ideas because you can see the flash here. After the magician we have this uh, queen of... Uh, of cups. Um, these two cards here may relate to a scorpionic uh, type of energy. Uh, Scorpio is usually water and fire. <clears throat> so you can see here the water and you can see here all the elements, but um, Scorpio um, is a shapeshifter and they can change and uh, be represented in tarot by any card. Okay, so um, a bit of scorpionic energy here. Queen of Cups, uh, she has this superpower of emotions. Water is her element. Um, she's also a queen, so she's a bit mature, but she is uh, on the receiving part. Uh, this may talk about female or male, it doesn't matter, but in the month of June, they're coming up as being uh, in their emotional power and being in a receptive mood. <coughs> well, not so receptive, as uh, uh, right behind her, you have the Three of Cups. Three of Cups may talk about the celebration, it may talk about a love triangle, uh, or it may talk about um, a love bond uh, between two people and love between them. So, what I'm seeing here is that the Queen of Cups is sitting on her throne with her toe dipped in the water. <coughs> and right uh, inside, uh, right uh, after her comes this Three of Cups. <sighs> so, uh, she may have been involved in uh, this type of uh, situation, uh, either a celebration or she may have been in love with someone recently, um, or she may have been part of a love triangle. But it's right here after her. Uh, it's after her, like it's in the recent uh, recent past. It's um, 
in the recent past she may have been involved in this type of an energy of three of cups so you see these people here they're hanging above uh, water these are emotional waters and they're ready to be uh, baptized in them it's some sort of experience that will bring about uh, emotional um, um knowledge okay and if you look closely you can see these cups it's like they're they're having wine wine is also representative of uh, blood because uh, they're both um, red liquids okay so uh, these people are as i said being baptized in emotional waters uh, it doesn't matter how they ended up here uh, what's important is that these types of situations have something to teach um, the two or the three people or how how however many people there there were involved in the situation you need to get the knowledge from it um either how you ended up there what it represents for you what it represents for other people if you're self focused self-centered uh, uh, then uh, your main focus will be how did i end up uh, here uh, how can i avoid this in the future uh, what does this mean for me if you're also concerned about the general situation here uh, you will also be concerned about what are other people's motives in participating in this type of situation but it comes right after her so she's covering her cup here it's like she still has the memory uh, her toe is dipped in these emotional waters she's sitting at the bottom of a waterfall so uh, all these emotions are coming uh, over her she's surrounded by her emotions also you can see the faces of the moon here on top of the uh, from that she is sitting on so um, the moon also talks about emotions okay it's very well tied into our feminine side doesn't matter if you're male or, or female we both have a masculine and a feminine side so she can still feel like the sting of the past here uh, from this situation it's like very close to her she's not quite out of I would say out of the woods, but she's not quite out of the water. Uh, she can, she still has um, a bit of emotions here running through her about this situation. Now, the magician is, uh, it's like the magician is sitting her down and talking to her. This may be an external person, uh, or this may be her own self, just another part of this Queen of Cups. And uh, you can clearly see the magician. Uh, he is... Uh, <clears throat> He has his uh, hand, one towards the sky and one towards uh, the earth. So this talks about that uh, hermetic principle as above, so below. If it's in the macrocosm, it's also going to be manifested in the microcosm. So if this has happened on the exterior, clearly there, the Queen of Cups has some issues on the bottom of her heart that she needs to deal with she needs to face as to not end up ever in this three of cups type of uh, situations <clears throat> um i'm getting the, the feeling that uh, the queen of cups in this reading she is very dissatisfied uh, upon how this situation uh, went okay so the magician here it's like it's sitting her down and telling her as above so below so you still need to work on yourself uh, in some aspects of yourself in your soul really search inside see what it is that's vibrating on the inside that uh, resonates with this type of situations on the outside um she is oriented towards the magician with her back towards uh, this three of cups here so uh, she's no longer involved in a way uh this situation uh, she may have been involved 
uh, in it or this may have been done behind her back. It's like uh, when you throw a stone into the water, it's going to create ripples. And here, uh, with her toe in the water, it's like she will feel these ripples. Even if uh, this sort of situation has been done behind her back, um, she can read the vib emotional vibrations of people. She has an intuition, emotional intuition, so she knows, she feels it's here. And she also has her face uh, uh, peeking, peeking somehow in, uh, towards the right side. So she knows. She knows uh, what happened. If she was involved, she will knows that this is not a great situation to be in. Uh, and she's a bit discontent because a bit jaded because you can see the cup in her hand here and she is holding her hand over like, yes, no more for me. This is enough. Uh, for some of you, it's like um, maybe uh, you have, uh, this is talking very practical and pinpointed uh, types of uh, situations. Maybe you have participated in some sort of a social gathering and uh, while you were <clears throat> having a discussion with someone, um, you can clearly take a peek and see what some people are doing behind your back in a way it's like you can see uh you can feel the emotional vibrations of other people and what they are doing for some of you and from this uh from this emotional baptism here where three people are levitating uh, above the water here we have the knight of cups which is coming out from these emotional waters okay with his back toward, uh, towards this Three of Cups situation. So the Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups are both facing away from the situation. No one uh, wants to really face or talk about uh, this thing here, which has happened. The Knight of Cups is on a mission, okay? So they rise above they rise above this situation. Uh, they have their shield on because they know uh, these types of uh, things hurt. Uh, but they they have something to do, so they need to give this cup to someone. Uh, Queen of Cups is uh, refusing. It's like she knows uh, that she needs some time now to digest the situation. Uh, she's covering her cup, no more for her. But the Knight of Cups is holding uh, their cup very high up in the air, so they really want to offer this cup to someone. If uh, here, uh, if they didn't get anything from here, they will move on not so quickly it's not like the knight of uh, swords or wands uh, a bit more slower but they know what they're doing in a way <laughs> with their heart but here you can see them they have risen above the water so they're not actually touching the water it's like a geese moving uh, across water you know uh, they haven't taken the time to actually analyze this situation, why this has happened to them, but as to get the knowledge, okay? Um, it's like uh, that character Don Quixote, you know, he was uh, a hope, like a hopeless romantic. Uh, I'm not saying the Knight of uh, Cups is a hopeless romantic, but... Uh, uh, love is like their torch that is guiding them forward. Um, but they're moving away, okay? They're moving away with their shield on, with uh, uh, the cup, towards what? Towards to the High Priestess. <clears throat> now, the High Priestess is... Um, um, it's a very interesting archetype. Uh, she vibrates with uh, knowledge from the divine. She's very well in tune with uh, 
higher messages. Uh, she has inside of herself integrated her masculine side here. You can see this black pillar which has the pine cone on top of it. And this pine cone, you can actually find it on uh, uh, many monuments across the world because it's, uh, it uh, talks about the pineal gland that we have in, in our uh, brain. Okay, it's uh, like the third eye. And she also has her feminine uh, side in her, this white pillar, which has an egg on top of it, talking about the uh, fem female fertility. So she is a very... Um, She's a very interesting uh, person, uh, but as you can see here in the card, it's like she is uh, made out of stone in a way. What you need to know about this type of personality is that although this person's body is here and they may respond to certain questions, uh, their soul, their mind, their... Um, their emotions, everything, they're in, they're inwardly drawn, they're introverts, their, their body is here with us, but everything else uh, is plugged into other uh, dimensions. Uh, you can also see here in these two cards, also the hermit, that you have the moon here. She is very well tied into the moon. She's a very introvert person. She is a very secretive person. If you say something and, uh, you know, take her out of that frequency of her spell, of her research here, the knowledge from the past, it's like she will react in feisty ways. Um, this is... Uh, uh, it's something about this card uh, with the two pillars, because you have two, the high priestess. Um, mm, high priestess is uh, tied into the justice card, which also has uh, two pillars in it. Um, in the justice card, uh, it's associated with the number 11. So... Um, 11 is like 1 plus 1, so you have a duality, but they're, um, they're not, um, how should I say that, they're not combined into one, like uh, yin and yang. Uh, they're very separate, separated, they're like polar opposites. Okay, that's why you have one and one. But here with the High Priestess, it's like you have that duality, but you have it inside of one unit because it's a two. You don't have two numbers, you have just one. The two. Okay, so uh, the Knight of Cups here is actually heading towards uh, a person that is very independent. They have learned uh, to be uh, um, a woman... <coughs> A woman and a man um, it's like they are their own mothers and they are their own fathers they are very well on their own uh, why is this um, you know the old uh, Bible story about uh, Lilith uh, the first um, wife of Adam um, she was a rebel. She had her own uh, inner system She was uh, that she was listening to. And she was cast out of... Um, <clears throat> she was cast out of uh, heaven. And uh, she was so torn apart uh, by the fact uh, that she, uh, she went, she actually went through this process of trying to live on uh, her own, be her own woman and her own man also. <coughs> she ended up running off and marrying the devil, and uh, Adam uh, was uh, gifted uh, his counterpart Eve, which is um, represented by uh, the Empress. Um... But this is a person that has their own guiding system. They don't need exterior forces, you just need to leave them alone in a way. I don't know if it's good that the Knight of Cups is heading towards the, 
this in this direction but uh, we will see in the month of july what comes of it now the high priestess here is flanked by uh, on one side by the knight of cups uh, which is coming towards her with his heart she is uh, we don't know where she is actually because she it's like she's made of stone here she's she has her book of knowledge <clears throat> so she has a lot of experience um a lot of experience she has a lot of knowledge uh, pertaining to um, existence this is a very spiritual person and when I say spiritual I don't mean necessarily that uh, they are I don't know a good Christian or they just know things they are very in tune with their intuition the moon and their intuition are the guiding elements of this person <coughs> sorry uh, and then uh, you have nine the hermit you have nine the hermit, so this is a very, um, very, uh, the high priestess is not a sociable person. Um, they are introverted, they need a lot of space and time to listen to the signals that they get on the inside. And here you have Nine the Hermit, which uh, talks about also singlehood, it's a nine. And uh, the Hermit also goes into a cave and they sit there uh, with themselves, not eating, not drinking. Uh, the only thing that they bring with them, it's like their mind, their consciousness because they want to shed light on only one thing. They is isolate themselves as to shed light inside into certain things that they are interested in. <clears throat> so these two here, uh, if they are one person, um, I don't know towards who this Knight of Cups is heading because this person is shedding light inside of themselves. So uh, the High Priestess here, it's like she's made of stone and the Hermit usually goes into a cave with the small light here. So uh, this person is uh, deep in meditation, deep in self-reflection, deep in self-discovery, self-knowledge feeling of oneself really um shield uh, shielding themselves from the whole world because they're on this journey of self-knowledge uh the knight of cups may be also on a journey of self-knowledge but they <clears throat> want to know themselves by offering their hearts in emotional situations uh that's why maybe they have been involved with the queen of cups here uh, in this type of thing, and now they're moving uh, uh, towards the High Priestess. So, both of these uh, people here, uh, the high, to the High Priestess and the Queen of Cups, uh, they're both uh, embodying this uh, witchy uh, feminine archetype. So, it's like the Knight of Cups has a certain type that they want to uh, uh, experience. It's like they know if they want emotions they <clears throat> or gather emotional experience, they need to um, head towards these types of people, okay? Uh, which seem difficult, but they are very experienced. They can feel their emotions. They're very well in tune with their intuition and uh, the moon. So we have a lot of um, references here to the moon. You can see the moon here in uh, the Queen of Cups' uh, throne. You can see the um, moon here over uh, seeing the High Priestess and also here uh, with the Hermit. <coughs> Now, another thing that I see here um, with this uh, Knight of Cups, this may be you or someone in your life, uh, but the Knight of Cups may be also be tied into the Magician and the Hermit. Because you have this uh, one is starting off the reading, then you have Nine the Hermit. So, 
this Knight of Cups may come from this start where they know they have the power to manifest certain things and now they're trying to build it. So they feel like an architect. I have all this power. This may be you, Virgo, thinking that, okay, I have all these elements, all this power. Now I can start building my love life or my... Um, bonds or my experience in this emotional domain okay and we see you here halfway through the process uh like i told you don quixote you know the uh, hopeless romantic that is trying to conquer people with his heart um a bit naive of heart <laughs> And at the end of it, it's like you have nine, the hermit, flanking, uh, ending the reading and uh, uh, being uh, oriented towards the past. So actually analyzing what they have achieved, what they have done up until now. Okay. One, the magician, nine, the hermit. And uh, one plus nine is ten. 1 plus 0 is 1, so you're going to get back to this thing. So this is like a whole cycle that's ending here, okay? This is uh, your uh, timeline, in a way. So you're starting as the architect, here you're actually on the mission, and now in the hermit, looking back, analyzing what has been, um, as to gather the knowledge. So that's why the Knight of Cups may actually not sit here with this uh, situation like the Queen of Cups is doing. Uh, that's why they're moving forward, because they want to create, they, they want to give their um, their the cup of their heart here. Now, the Hermit is also shedding light on the High Priestess. Uh, and the High Priestess may talk about... Um, may talk about uh, secrets, okay? Hidden things. Also the Moon reference here in these cards. Uh, it's very hard to see things in, in the night time. Uh, only with the light of the Moon. Because you can, it can cast shadows, you can see things that are not there. So it's very hard to navigate with uh, this emotional um, secrecy, okay? Uh, the High Priestess is a person that uh, is not going to tell you how they feel. Uh, they keep to themselves. And also the Knight of Cups, they may express things through their body language, through their uh, uh, eyes, through their things, but look at this shield. We don't know who this person is. We don't know if they're smiling, if they're sad, if they're angry. But they're keeping up a front. They have this uh, uh, very brave facade of uh, trying to be the savior. <laughs> okay? So these are things to work with in the month of um, in the month of June. Uh, I don't know who these people are. <coughs> uh, you need to apply this for your own self. Use your intuition and take my words as metaphors. But I think you got the general ideas and vibes. What I want to do now is a thing that I haven't done up until now. But I want to see the bottom of the deck and uh, the top of the deck. Bottom of the deck is usually the basis for the month of June, like the basis for all these people being involved and tied together. And top of the deck is the, um, it's like the higher meaning, their wishes, hopes and dreams. Okay, so bottom of the deck here, <coughs> we have seven, the chariot. So, for everyone in this reading, uh, the f foundation is that uh, they may all want to move. They want to move forward, but uh, with the chariot you have here, the Sagittarius, and this is like the Cancer, the beautiful inside of Cancer from where all that love comes, and shooting stars. So, everyone wants, in a way, like fast movement, but with another person coming together as to uh, get uh, get this love story on the road, okay? 
um, but the high priestess and the hermit, it's like they're not going to get the show on the road until they find someone that actually understands them and has patience with them. Uh, Knight of Cups needs someone who will actually accept their cup. Now, the Queen of Cups is not moving because she has this very close to her. Okay? And she's sitting with uh, her back torn... Uh, with her back uh, turned uh, from it, uh, with the leg in the water. So she's still analyzing a bit the situation. She's not ready to move forward like in this uh, chariot card here. Okay. And top of the deck, top of the deck is... There we go, Four of Cups. No, this is a very stagnant energy. <laughs> Uh, so the reasons why people are doing this, the foundation is because they all want this. They want movement. Um, their hopes and dreams and the higher meaning for this is, which is weird because they're, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, their hopes and dreams are emotional stability in a way. Emotional stability with another person so i normally would expect the four of cups to come here in a way because everyone is stagnant so this would be like the foundational part for this reading but uh apparently the foundation is uh, the basis for this is waiting on another person as to get the show on the road the higher meaning for waiting like this Four of Cups person here is, um, <clears throat> they all want emotional fulfillment, okay? Four is very stable, is very uh, immobile. It's like being uh, the sort of a Buddha figure sitting underneath the cherry blossom tree with your emotions and being okay. And here you have another reference to uh, cancer, okay? So, like here, in this card. So, this is actually beautiful in the way, I mean, everyone in the reading uh, wants to be with another person uh, as to achieve the higher octave of the month of June is to achieve some sort of emotional stability. And it's a bit interesting because um, Queen of Cups, she is sitting, okay? Uh, the High Priestess is also sitting. Uh, the only people that are moving are the Knight of Cups and the Hermit. Um, well, I wouldn't count the Hermit also. He's more of a inside of yourself traveler and the magician is one that is stagnant but just because he does his spells right he manifests things outside of him so that's why he doesn't need to move also the hermit uh, sitting in a cave doesn't move so much uh, yeah it may not be fun to experience all of these things but i think uh, Everyone comes from a good place in this month. I mean, the, the foundation and the, uh, the hopes and dreams and the higher octave of this, uh, it's beautiful. Just because some situations don't fit well or people don't fit well together, we don't need to be so angry, so feisty or take it personal. It takes a, a lot of time to find your person, your situation, your place in the world, things of the sort. And you may run into people and end up in these types of situations just to get the knowledge. Uh, if you tomorrow would meet your uh, soulmate, for example, or twin flame or things of the sort, would you be ready? Do you have all the experiences necessary as to have a great life together? No, you sometimes need to go through bad things before you meet that one person. Some of us, we need to go through these uh, rough patches after you meet your soulmate or your twin flame. 
so it's healthy any type of experience is healthy so <clears throat> try to take care of not acting feisty uh, not uh, uh, you know uh, insulting people and things of the sorts these experiences are necessary just look at the knight of cups he just comes out from this uh, situation but he moves forward because he has his heart on his sleeve the holy grail of love there and he's moving to forward he has this shield on uh, he needs to evolve more uh, but he is a believer, okay? 